by way of, as Robert mentioned, by way of uh, remembrance and focus this morning, I thought we'd talk just a couple minutes about one of the sayings of Jesus at the crucifixion. So I'm in Luke chapter 23. The Gospel of Luke records um, several things Jesus said uh, before he was killed on the cross. And I'm in verse, let's see, verse 32. I was reading an article on this topic this week. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was titled, uh, The Difficult Sayings of Jesus. And it pointed out a couple of things I hadn't thought about or, or completely worked out, I guess, in my mind. So I thought I'd share some of that with you this morning. I'm in verse 32 of Luke chapter 23. Verse 32 says, Two others who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. And when they came to the place that is called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Verse 34, And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. What do you think Jesus meant here? Father, forgive them. But they know not what they do. I, I think the implication is he isn't necessarily speaking to the criminals. He's speaking to the broader group there, um, the people, the mob, the crowd that was at the cross. And so, again, as we kind of reflect on the memorial in Jesus' life and sacrifice, I'll offer up a few possibilities of what maybe Jesus meant. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. First of all, I think there's a, there's a couple things they did know. So let's talk about that first. What did, what did they know? And I'll, I'll offer three things up to you, uh, what they knew. One, they knew they were killing a man. I think that's crystal clear. Again, in Luke 23, if you back up to verse 21, what did the crowd, what did the people shout when Pilate was wanting to release him because he couldn't find a fault? They shouted, crucify him. They shouted, crucify him. I think we all understand that Roman crucifixion always resulted in death. There was no other option. Crucifixion equals death. And so on one hand, the people knew they're killing someone. So they knew someone was dying. Number two, they knew Jesus was a religious teacher. Again, if you go back further in Luke 23, back in verse 5, after Pilate says, I find no fault in this man. What did the people say was the charge, though, against Jesus? Verse 5. They said, quote, he stirs up the people teaching throughout all Judea and from Galilee even to this place, that, of course, being Jerusalem. So, you know, Jesus wasn't, um, he wasn't teaching mathematics or uh, uh, skills of the carpentry trade. Um, he was teaching things that cause people's lives to be changed. He was teaching them about God. He was teaching them about himself. He was teaching them how to worship God. And so again, um, he was a religious teacher. And I would suggest to you guys that they knew he was a religious uh, teacher. And the final thing I jotted down that things they did know, um, I think they knew that Jesus had done uh, many signs and many miracles. Over in John's gospel, um, after Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, a, a problem arose with the chief priest and the Pharisees. They were very concerned about what to do with Jesus. In John 11, verse 47, they asked among themselves, what are we to do for this man performs many signs? So on one hand, I think we can summarize here. What did the people know? They knew they were killing someone. They knew he was a religious teacher and that he had performed signs, wonders, miracles um, in the midst of many people. Um, so again, what's Jesus saying then? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Again, I don't know, uh, but I'll offer up another three possibilities here. One is, I don't think necessarily they knew or, um, or had connected the dots that Christ must die, that the Christ must die. You know, the Jews had this thought of the Messiah coming and uh, as, as a great earthly ruler. He was going to take over the throne of David. He was going to boot out the Romans. Um, he will bring 
um, freedom in the sense of uh, political oppression, occupation. That was the idea they thought that God's Christ would, would do. In Acts chapter 3, um, Peter says in verses 17 18, he says, And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your fathers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that this Christ would suffer, thus he fulfilled. Second possibility would be that they didn't know that killing Jesus fulfilled prophecy. Paul, Daniel's uh, uh, talking about this in, in the class, um, Paul in his letters to the, the first Corinthians, uh, the first letter I should say, chapter 2, um, and speaking about the Spirit in verse 7 and 8 says, But we impart a secret and hidden wisdom from God, which God decreed before the ages of our glory. None of the rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So think back to the ministry of Jesus. What did the religious leaders, what, what was the problem they kept having with Jesus? So what was the, the issues at hand? Um, in, in my summation, I mean, it, it, it's all about the law. It's all about the law. Um, the thought was this Jesus um, is going against the law and the prophets. Now again, think back here to Luke chapter 23. It's, it's, it's a shame, it's very sad, um, but it's interesting, I think, that they didn't see that Jesus on the cross fulfilled the same law and prophets they were so passionate about preserving um, uh, at that time. Third possibility I, I might offer up, they didn't know that Jesus was the Son of God. Remember in Matthew, Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that I am? Very common, we know this. Um, before Peter's great confession, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who does he offer up? He says, some people say you're John the Baptist. Others say you're Elijah. Some say you're Jeremiah, or you're another one of the prophets. Uh, the point is, there was confusion about who Jesus really was. And so to summarize, I'm not sure what Jesus meant. Uh, maybe that's why this article I was reading called it the, the difficult sayings of Jesus. I'm not sure what he meant when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I, I offer these three up as possibilities um, to that question. That the people didn't know that the Christ must die, that the death of Jesus fulfilled prophecy, and they did not recognize Jesus as God's Son. What about us, though? What about us? Ignorance is no excuse. It wasn't an excuse for them. It's not an excuse for us today. Um, I'm reminded of what Peter tells um, at Pentecost in chapter 2. After explaining that the death of Jesus and what that meant, he tells the people, you need to repent and be baptized, every one of you, calling on the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. And so as we contemplate the uh, the Lord's Supper, the memorial service this morning, that same forgiveness, the same forgiveness is offered to us as well. We weren't at the crucifixion, uh, but this morning we have uh, quite literally the gospel in hand. We have the gospel, the full gospel message, um, and we're proclaiming this morning at this time that Jesus is the Christ that he came and fulfilled all the law, all the prophets. He was the fulfillment of that. And we're proclaiming that his death and resurrection was part of God's plan, part of God's plan for redemption, for forgiveness, and ultimately salvation.